Good morning, everybody. The Rev here. It's time for You Got It, A Cup of Coffee with Jesus. How are you guys? Wow. Good word here this morning. Hey, I just want to talk to you. You know, when we, when we go to churches, we listen to pastors. We listen to teachers. We listen. We listen, hopefully, intently, wondering what they're saying, listening to their heart. Timothy talks about this in, um, th this is out of the Passion Translation this morning. 1 Timothy 1, starting with verse 4. Nor pay any attention to cultural myths, traditions, or endless study of genealogies. Those digressions only breed controversy and debates. They are devoid of power that builds up and strengthens the church in faith of God. For we reach the goal of fulfilling all the commandments when we love others deeply with a pure heart, a clean conscience, and sincere faith. Some believers have been led astray by teachings and speculations that emphasize nothing more than the empty words of men. The empty words of men. They presume to be expert teachers of the law, but they don't have the slightest idea of what they're talking about. They simply love to argue. That's in case in point what happens in some churches. I'm not on the bash on churches, but you really need to know that they are preaching the word of God and not just arguing points, just to argue points. Because that is, they will be dealt with, I promise you. But what are they really saying? And it even talk, goes on further in this. It says, Paul's use of the law. We know that the moral code of the law is beautiful when applied as God intended. The a law applied as God intended. But actually the law was not established for righteous people, but to bring conviction of sin to the unrighteous. The law was established to bring the revelation of sin to the evildoers and to the rebellious, the sinners without God. Those who are, victor uh, are vicious and and perverse, and to those who strike their fathers and their mothers, sinners, murderers, rapists, those who are sexually impure, homosexuals, kidnappers, liars, those who break the oaths, and those who oppose the teaching of godliness and the purity in the church. They are the ones that the law is for. Paul's making, uh, he's saying, he said, you have to be careful who's teaching you, and don't just be teaching whatever you want just for the sake of just teaching something. And the application of the law is very uh, crucial that it's had a point for teaching what sin was to people that really had no moral compass. That's what Paul was saying in this letter to Timothy. We need to be careful because I love the first part of this, nor pay attention to cultural myths, traditions, and endless studies of genealogies. The study of genealogy when it is in in the Old Testament as the genealogy that would lead to Christ, that is very important. But he says all the other genealogies, it's like, why are you spending all your time on that? Why are you spending all your time on cultural myths? And, and why are you spending so much time on your church traditions, on your traditions, and you're supporting the system of traditions, and you're not looking at loving one another, you're not reaching the goal of the commandments that we love others deeply with a pure heart, a clean conscience, and a sincere faith. That's what he's saying here. He said, stop worrying about supporting your traditions, supporting your myths, and supporting your genealogies for the purpose of supporting your arguments in the law. He said, you need to be concerned about what Christ was concerned about. And Christ was concerned about, for we reach the goal of fulfilling all the commandments when we love others deeply with a pure heart, a clean conscience, and sincere faith. When he's talking about don't judge others, if your brother's having struggles, you need to get him some help and say, hey, you need help. You need help. I remember when I was deacon, deep in the spirit of alcoholism, I had a friend of mine that says, dude, are you, are you okay? Are you, out of really all my friends, I only had one friend that stood up and said, hey, I think you got an issue and you need to, you need to take a look at it. And of course, what did I say? I was in denial and said, nah, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. But I only had one. 
And that's the kind of friend that you really need in your life. That's the one that says, hey, dude, you might be off base. Your compass may not be pointing true north anymore. Those are the ones that you need in your life. You need people to rally around you, to support you, and not support your myths, not support your cultural myths. Not to, and my cultural myth was that everybody in my family drank, and that's just what you did when you got older. That was a cultural myth that I was supporting. And I only had one friend that asked, that questioned me and said, dude, are you okay? Because he knew my culture. But he said, even in your culture, I don't think that your compass is pointing in the right direction. One friend. Are you that one friend? Are you the one that's going to say, I'm not going to let you support your cultural myths. I'm not going to let you support your traditions anymore. And I'm not going to let you support your endless study of your genealogies. And hey, that's just how my family is. Do, are you going to be that one friend? Are you going to be the one that stands up against the grain? That when you see third generation pastors that are still preaching the same stuff that their daddy and their grandpa did, that's not the word of God, that it's really just cultural myths, endless studies of genealogies, because that's what my dad and my grandpa did. And they're supporting their traditions because that's what my family has done. Or are you going to listen to them preach the whole word of God, the whole word of God? It's a question before you today. What are you supporting? Are you supporting a system that's just supporting cultural myths, traditions, and endless genealogies? Or are you supporting the word of God? And are you supporting for we reach the goal of fulfilling all the commandments when we love others deeply with a pure heart, clean conscience, and sincere faith? When you love others well, you call them to their best. When you love others well, you, you strike out stuff that's not right in their life. You help them. You help them. If you have keys to help unlock doors in their life, you help them. For we reach the goal of fulfilling all the commandments when you love others well. That's being there when you need when they need you. That's just not giving them your opinion, but you give them the word of God to help them stand on something firm that stood the test of time. That's what we do. That's how we love one another. That's how we love each other with a clear conscience. And we're not while we're not wrapped up in paying attention to cultural myths, traditions, and endless studies of genealogies. Because I've been studying my grandpa's sermons for a long time. If you're a third generation pastor, guess what? That's amazing. But if you're a third generation pastor that's spreading cultural myths and traditions, that's not good. Read the word. I love you guys. I hope to see you soon. Hey, guess what? Jesus loves you. I love you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Have a great day. Standing firm. For we reach the goal of fulfilling all the commandments when we love others deeply with a pure heart, a clean conscience, and sincere faith. See you. Goodbye.